Thanks for being with us here on Business Now. Well, the site of Ukraine's latest attack on the Kirsch Bridge that links Russia with Ukraine might gladden the hearts of those who want to see Russia defeated. But the retaliation is for Russia to abandon a deal to allow food shipments from Ukraine. Last year, that deal saw 32 million tonnes of wheat, corn and other grains exported through the Black Sea to 45 different countries. Australia now, the sixth biggest wheat exporter in the world. So what part can we play to fill this food gap? Jared Greenville is the Executive Director of the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences, ABARES, and joins me now. Jared, always good to chat to you about this. Australia, does it have a role to play if suddenly shipments from Ukraine are not able to get through the Black Sea? Thanks for having me on. Um, yes, yeah, certainly Australia does have a role to play. So Australia's had the last three years is pretty three exceptional seasons where we've seen our wheat production and other grains production really hit record highs. And so at the moment, we've been exporting record amounts of grain to the international market. And we're expecting that to continue for the, for the next little while, as particularly as our stocks have built up. Um, but as we go forward into to next year and as this season starts to play out and the bomb risking, you know, warning us there's a high risk of El Nino, some of our ability to really participate in supply in world markets is going to lessen a little bit. One of the things we just saw, saw, saw a chart that shows Russia, clearly the dominant supplier and exporter of wheat to the world right now. Uh, does its actions, what it does in the future, does that also have an impact on food supplies and potentially price around the world? Yeah, Russia is certainly one to watch. So what we would expect, in, given what's happened and the fact that Ukraine wasn't really expecting to produce that much this year, given you know, everything that's going on, is that these this step to, to stop the Black Sea traders will add a significant amount of volatility to world markets um, as the uncertainty about where supply is going to come from. And part of that uncertainty really is about what, what's going to happen with Russia and what are their level of supply and who's going to take it and whether or not Russia will restrict exports, which they have done in the past. That uncertainty is really a, a key kind of bit of information that's going to drive some of the outcomes we see in world markets. Um, if Russia maintains its like large level of supply and it's been one of the world's largest wheat exporters for now some time, then that should moderate the, that. But I guess as the market waits for the information and for this uncertainty to dive down, we would expect some volatility. And as you point out, the Australian response may potentially be limited as El Nino and the rains that came from that dissipate. But then, as you say, there may very well be an El Nino effect that might come or a, a, a positive Indian Ocean dipole, which could really dry up some of that rain and limit the production here in Australia. Yeah, the seasonal outlook for Australia is, is is finely balanced at the moment. So we know that an El Nino, or there's a good chance, I think the bomb's predicting about a 70% chance of an El Nino forming. And on the back of that, also potentially this positive Indian Ocean dipole, which is the other major climate driver, which would see drying conditions across all of Australia's major wheat and grain producing areas. That we're expecting to already start to impact production and a fall in our gross value of production from record highs at the moment um, down to about $79 billion. And, and also our, our winter crop falling from record highs to about the sixth largest, about you know, 45 million tonnes. So that will limit our ability to expand, I guess, exports in this situation. But we will be buffeted a little bit by just the high level of stocks that we have currently in the country. And so over the next 12 months, we would still expect uh, a, a good record kind of or a good level of exports to continue to move out. But that will start to limit. And the longer it takes or the longer the uncertainty exists, I guess the, the greater the limits that will be placed on Australia's role in starting to moderate some of those higher prices that we'll see. And, and if any of this in the Black Sea affects supply, it also therefore affects price. Uh, and that's one of the keys, especially given um, food shortages that could come as a result of the actions of Russia. That's right. So at the moment with this deal and also with, I guess, higher supplies in Australia, but, but the expectation that some of the poor conditions that we've seen in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly in the United States, Canada and Europe, starting to dissipate as our conditions get worse, 
um, that prices have fallen back quite consider considerably from the highs that we saw last year. And we see that, you know, grain prices, wheat prices, for example, are about 54% lower than at, you know, prior to this announcement than they were, you know, 12 months or so ago when, you know, that first that uncertainty existed. Um, we've seen a bit of a rally in futures markets around grain prices starting to anticipate this uncertainty. Um, but I think as we look forward that, you know, the uncertainty and also some of the lingering effects of the dry conditions in Europe and, and the United States and, and our position as an Argentina, also another major producer, starts to, to have a, a negative impact on our production. Some of those prices we would expect to maintain at elevated levels with that uncertainty and that volatility that we'd expect to start to come back into the market. Jared Greenville, always good to chat to you and many thanks for your time today. Thanks again for having me on.